Hello everyone. So recently I have been working a lot with files in C, and as it turns out I was misunderstanding something in a fundamental way, and I want to share with you what I was misunderstanding and what is actually going on. And this is actually pretty relevant when you're using any programming language, so the way Python uses files, or the way C++ uses files. These are all, at their core, doing the same thing, and this is pretty close to the base layer of what we're looking at. So let's just start in and I'll show you what I was misunderstanding and how to better understand what's going on here. So if we look at my desktop, we can see there are no files here and I am going to create one really quick. We can see that I have the standard in and out library along with my own personal library that I've been building. So I'm going to delete all that's there and I'm going to create a pointer to a file. So this is going to be a file pointer. We're just going to name it file. We're going to set it equal to F open. And then we're going to pass it the path of the file that we want to open. And you can do this relative to where the executable is being run from. So if you are running it on your desktop, you can just refer to other files on your desktop by their name. But I'm going to put in the full path just to prevent any possible errors here. So we are going to put in slash users eric slash desktop slash example.txt. And then we need to put in the mode that we are going to open this file in. We can read the file, we can write the file, we can append to the file if we want to add new things without deleting what was already there. And we would do that by using R, W, A, whatever mode we want to use. And in this case, we want W because we don't have a file there yet. We are going to create one. So we're going to write to a file. Now I'm going to create a string and this is going to be what gets written to the file. So we'll say this is a character pointer. We'll call it hello and we'll set it equal to hello world. Now, the next part that I want to do is actually write my hello world to this file. So I can just say f write, and this takes a pointer to what we want to write exactly. So we are going to write hello. And this is, these two points confused me for a while, but the, the way to understand it is that we need to pass in the size of the individual item that we are passing in and then the number of those items. So I could here say that I want the string length. I would need the string library for this. I could say that I want the string length of hello, and I have one of those items in this entire thing that I'm writing. Or I could say that I have the size of the items is one, so one byte, and the number of them is the string length of hello. We might need to do hello plus one because of the null terminal character, but basically we are writing bytes, individual bytes, and that is actually where my misconception comes in. I'm going to go more into that in a little bit. But basically, the spoiler is that everything here is just bytes, and we can think about everything as bytes rather than as strings or integers or anything else. But anyway, this f right, we say what the size of the item we are putting in and how many there are. In this case, I am saying that each item is one byte, and I am putting this many bytes into the file, and this is the file I want to put them in. And then I can just say F close and pass it file. And if I run this, go to my desktop. Sometimes it takes a second to run the first time we can see. There we go, there it finished. So now we open this example and there it is, hello world. So we've created a file. Now let's try to read from that file instead. This is going to be a very similar process. Instead of W, we are going to say R. And here for the character, I am going to specify a buffer. Let's say I don't know how big the file is. I don't know how much data is in there. And I can just say that I don't want to take more than 255 bytes. So I can say, or I can 
255 characters in this case, but that's our misconception. Anyway, so I'm going to say we're going to do a character array called hello of 255 bytes. That's going to be our buffer. And now instead of f write, I'm going to do f read. This again is taking a pointer to the destination, so where this is going to end up. And since arrays, when referenced by their name alone with no index, are pointers, we can just pass the name hello in there. Again, the size of each item. So we're going to do one byte at a time. The number of items, we are just going to assume the buffer. And this is all coming from file. And now we are just going to do printf %s backslash n and hello. And then we will again close the file. So if I run this, we should get an output, hello world. But we get something a little bit strange. We get hello world B. We saw earlier that this B is not in the file. So where is it coming from? And the problem has to do with the way that I am allocating memory here. So I create a character array of 255 bytes. So on the stack, our stack pointer is moved 255 bytes back, but we don't actually set those to be anything. So if there is some garbage memory left behind from some other operation we did, we will end up picking that up. So what we actually want to do is through the string library, we can call this memset function. And we're going to point this at hello. We are going to write zero to every single element of this array. And we are going to do that for 255 elements. Now if I run it, we get our hello world nice and clean because we took the time to actually set the memory of all of those locations that we allocated. OK, so now for the misconception. What I was understanding this to be doing was that I create a string. I create this thing called a string and I am writing that string to this file. And then when I open it and read it, I am reading a string out of the file. And so the question becomes, well, if I want to store numbers in the file, how would I store numbers in such a way that I would be able to retrieve them as numbers? So let me give you an example here. Let's, let's wind back the clock a little bit to when we are writing to the file. And I can actually go ahead and put this back. Yes, okay. So instead, let's say my string that I'm writing in there is one, two, three. Okay, and I write that out to the file. We can see here it is one, two, three. And then how would I pull that back out in such a way that it's a number? If I read it again, I don't think I can. No, I can't. So we're going to open this again in read mode. Our buffer is going to be 255 characters. We will use memset. And then we are going to f read. Let me get those things in there. Do hello. One, 255, and file. OK. So now if we read this back in, our 1, 2, 3 will be printed to the screen. I didn't actually print it, but. I can't actually convert these back to integers. So I get one, two, three here, but let's say I say hello, zero, and percent C. That gives us our one, but this is a character. This is a one as a character, which as a actual digit, which is revealed by using percent D, I am actually storing the value 49. There. So as an integer, this is 49. And that's my misconception. It's, it's not storing a string. It's not storing integers. It's not storing anything 
that I create. It's not storing my classes. It is only storing bytes. Every file everywhere is only using bytes. And we can read these bytes and we can write these bytes and we can read these bytes in such a way that we encode them as characters. So 49, when encoded as an ASCII character, the, it, it becomes our, what is it? One, our, our character one. So the, the bytes, when read as binary, if you interpret those eight bits, as an integer, it's 49. If you interpret 49 as ASCII, it is one. So the misconception is that these are discrete things. They're not, okay? The only thing that is happening here are bytes, okay? And these bytes can be written to files. You can read them from files, you can manipulate them, and you can display them in particular ways. So. That is the misconception, and let me try and make it a little bit more vivid for you. So what if instead of reading from and writing to a text file, I wanted to use an image? So let's open this. I'm gonna open some pictures, and I have this example.jpg, and this is just a picture of my beautiful smile. <laughs> and let's go ahead and delete example.txt, and let's come in here, okay. So we're going to first want to change this to .jpg to reflect the new file name, and we are first going to read it. So instead of allocating a buffer, you can do this with text files too, by the way. What I want to do is actually get the size of the file so I know exactly what I am dealing with. So I'm going to do fseek on file, I'm going to pass it zero, and then I want to go to the seek end. So this is going to basically bring a pointer from the beginning of the file to the very end of the file. And then I can say long file size equals ftel file. And then I can see fseek file zero seek set. And that's going to reset it. So now our file size variable holds the size of the entire file. So what we're going to do is create a void pointer now, one that does not have an associated data type. So I'm going to say void pointer data equals, and I'm going to call malloc. Now this comes from the standard library. So I need to include standard lib.h, and I'm going to call malloc and the amount of space I want to allocate on the heap is going to be file size. And we can use our mem set here over data. That's actually unnecessary to do. You can call a separate function called calc that is actually going to set everything to zero. Uh, but for now, we're going to use malloc and just use a mem set. It does the same thing in the end. Also, I think malloc is a little bit more efficient unless you want to actually do the memory setting. So I think in this case, actually, calloc might be more effective. I don't know. We're just going to keep with malloc. It doesn't matter. We're just demonstrating it here. Anyway, so we create a void pointer that has space allocated on the heap that is equivalent to the amount of space required to hold this entire file. We clear that memory so that it's all zeros, and then we are going to read into data in one byte at a time of file size bytes. We are going to read from that file, and we are not going to print it. We're going to close it. Once we have read it into data, we are going to close the file. And now we're going to open a new file. We'll say file pointer copy equals f open. And I'm going to pass it users slash Eric desktop slash copy dot JPEG. And this is going to be in write mode. And just to show you, there is no copy dot JPEG on my desktop. There nothing up my sleeve, nothing up my sleeve. So we are going to take this copy and we are going to f write 
So we are going to write the contents of data. The size of it is going to be in one byte increments and how many bytes are there. We have file size to tell us that. And then this is all going into copy. And then we can simply F close copy. So if I run this, whoops, something happened. Right, data, file size, what did I do wrong here? Oh, simple mistakes can cause problems. There needs to be a slash at the beginning of this path. Okay, so let's try that once more. Okay, so now if I go back, we now have copy.jpg. And since I did a cut there, uh, you're not going to believe me that that worked. You probably will. I'm a trustworthy guy. Come on, what do, I, what do I have to gain from fooling you here? Anyway, let's do it again just to demonstrate. So I'm going to run this. It's done. Oh, it's already there. Okay, copy.jpg. Great, and this is a fully functioning image file. So you can use this to copy movies. You can use this to copy images. You can use this to copy audio files, absolutely anything, this same process. And the reason for that is because it's not reading in strings and it's not reading in integers. It's reading in bytes and we choose how to interpret those bytes ourselves. So here we are reading in the raw bytes of this JPEG file. And as far as choosing how we interpret them, we just don't interpret them. We just store them. We put them on the heap and we leave them there. And then we write them to a new file. So in our program, we are not interpreting those bytes at all. If we so desired, we could do something like this. So I could say printf percent %s, which is going to interpret things as a string or as characters. So the bytes that it receives are going to be displayed as characters. And then I can say data as the argument. And it's going to print out pretty much a bunch of nonsense that we see here. Now there are null characters in this image file, like in the middle of it. So it's, it's a relatively short string, even if we open up the file and look at it, but that's just because it hits a null character rather quickly. Point being, we can interpret these different bytes as characters and they will display things like this and they don't make any sense. But since it's all just raw bytes, we can open it, we can save it, we can manipulate it, write it to a new file, and when we open it in something that knows what to do with those bytes, we can get our image back. So, reading and writing files is all about bytes. I hope this was informative for you, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Toodaloo.